Hi folks, it's a beautiful day here in Minnesota. We're right on the Mississippi River and uh, we're just a stone's throw from the Federal Reserve here in Minnesota. We really appreciate their work and the work of all the feds in supporting this work. I wanna thank our hosts and our colleagues on the panel. I think the other panelists, uh, just a great example of leadership, risk-taking, innovation, and the difference that corporations and communities can make. And so what I wanna do is pivot into what uh, First Children's Finance has been working on for about 30 years. You know, we work on the business and financial side of early care and education exclusively. We're a CDFI that's dedicated only to childcare. And so we view our work as a laboratory, uh, doing a lot of learning, and ongoing learning, especially in these COVID times, when I talk with you a little bit about that. So I thought the first thing I would do is share our theory of change with you. And so you can see in the uh, orangish square, we work on the individual business level with uh, uh, individual childcare entrepreneurs, helping them uh, start businesses, grow businesses and work on their sustainability. And I'll show you a little bit more about that in a minute. The second thing we do in the blue square, or blue circle is um, we work on communities with whole communities on engaging community leaders to look at things like the supply and demand of care what the communities can do about this, engage them in their, uh, invest in their leadership and help them along with those things. We'll talk to you a little more about that. And then the third uh, one on the gold yellow is we work on systems level of policy, both at the local level, state and the federal level in order to increase the sustainability and supply of uh, childcare businesses. Next slide, please. So, <clears throat> I wanna travel with you through a few slides kind of quickly here. It's sort of like uh, comedians in cars getting coffee. So just hold on, Hank, uh, not as funny as Jerry Seinfeld, but just as opinionated. So hang on and let's go through a few slides kind of quickly here. Childcare is a small business with a big impact and we help entrepreneurs start and grow sustainable childcare businesses. And you can see we do that by trying to increase financial sustainability, empower the businesses and invest capital in high uh, quality childcare. Next slide, please. So again, uh, we launch childcare businesses. You can quickly read through some of the things we do in that, all the way from loans to market research analysis and business development planning. Next, please. And then um, uh, manage childcare businesses. You can just imagine thinking about this now and this time, uh, the significance of that. We saw the video clip of what it's like sitting in an early care and education business right now and the kind of things that need to happen. Um, and so next slide, please. And then growing businesses through financial projections, business planning and uh, capital for facilities and other activities. Next, please. So then engaging communities, adequate supply of childcare, critical component of a healthy community and a vibrant regional economy. So what we do is we partner with communities to develop local solutions. And you can get a quick look there at some of the things that come out of that analyzing supply uh, and demand and empowering communities, innovation and so on. Next, please. And then here's some of the kind of things that we do on the community level. Uh, one of our signature programs is a Rural Child Care Innovation Program. It's very exciting. And we do that across the state of Minnesota. We're getting ready to expand that work. Uh, by the way, we are working in 19 states at this point. So the Rural Child Care Innovation Program is truly unique. We're really bringing together community leaders and getting them onto the issue. And it's a very exciting process. Um, it's really amazing the kind of things the communities come up with. Um, and uh, and it's, it's valuable on so many different levels because we're seeing businesses, for example, saying, you know, we really, in order to attract and retain childcare, um, uh, in order to attract and retain um, uh, workers that we need to have strong childcare and they turn into advocates at all different levels in this and it's very exciting. Next, please. And so all of this uh, only makes sense if we use a comprehensive approach and we um, work on systems and advocacy all at the same time, things that we're talking about throughout this you know, webinar. And uh, 
you can take a quick scan there of the kind of things that that involves, including building public and private partnerships, working directly with systems uh, to align and leverage resources. And next, please. And these are some of the kinds of things that we do on that level. Uh, I, one of the, our signature projects is called the Early Childhood Business Collaboratory. And we're working with a dozen states with that right now. It's at the systems level and states apply to get into this uh, project, into this initiative for a couple of years. And we work with them, uh, helping them create a plan, uh, an action plan for their states to really get into the business and financial side of childcare and then to align their programs and activities uh, to help increase supply and sustainability. It's a very exciting project. Um, and then we also work with states uh, on uh, loan fund uh, and investment related activities and some of the other things that you see here. Next, please. So now, <clears throat> I really like this slide. Uh, we're, we're now faced with an enormous dilemma. And I think those of you who are working in the field and participate in these sessions know what the data is showing us here about what the situation here is. I look at these kids and looking at those eyes and it makes me really happy and really sad and yet hopeful all at the same time thinking about what is going on with families and kids and what they're missing right now and how important it is for early care and education to be open, be open safely and to move ahead and what kind of investment it takes to do this. If you could switch to the next side, please. I wanna talk with you just a little bit about things that we're working on now. So we're putting our heads together with a number of other CDFIs and investors and decision makers about creating a national child care economic recovery fund. And I wanna describe that just a little bit for you. And I wanna to try to answer the question, what can public and private investors do to address ECE business issues in the next 18 to 24 months. And this whole group of presentations has been about that issue. And Jocelyn, as you're talking about it, it really strikes me how important these issues are and how many folks um, are engaged and need to be engaged uh, in this critical issue. So one of the things I think is to target support directly to CDFIs that have expertise or want to gain expertise in the business side of childcare. It's what we do every day. We're, it's the only thing we do you know, as a CDFI. And so it gives us an upfront support work at the, uh, look at this work. And you know, part of this is that for the most part, CDFIs have been engaged in issues related to facilities. And at this point, I think we know that that's not enough. We need to work on the business support side of early care and education as well. What that means is, I believe, teaming up with other investors to provide CDFIs and other intermediaries with flexible capital, including forgivable, partially forgivable loans, concessionary loans, flexible terms, and credit enhancement all at the same time. And so this is where I believe that we need to go. And I also wanna shine a light on expanding investment and in technical assistance to early care and education businesses, because we can't do it without that. It, they have to go hand in hand, those things. The investments have to happen that are flexible and they also, this involves uh, the kinds, some of the kinds of technical assistance that I showed you earlier and other innovative approaches to get there. So that has to be taken you know, seriously now. We're working with a, a group of banks and as I mentioned, and others on this as well. Um, when I say that I'm viewing this as, um, uh, let's get some coffee, I'm serious about this. You know, I think we need to sit down with each other. We'd welcome that. I'd welcome that conversation to sit down and 
uh, imagine together and then work hard on trying to target resources and because it needs to start happening now. You know, it strikes me just as a final thing here. It strikes me that the what we're facing here with early care and education businesses resembles what's going on with COVID. In other words, in other words, it's rapidly changing. It's impossible for us to predict exactly what's going to happen. And so we need to set up the infrastructure to move quickly, to identify the needs, changing needs, to prioritize our investments, to implement you know, quickly and nimbly, to assess then the impacts and strategies of how they're working, and then to readjust as we go. I think we can see from watching the news that it's a rolling event, you know, what's happening, and that we need to have some of the same characteristics of, you know, quick response, you know, to these situations and to be innovative and, uh, and fast and nimble as we do it. So I'm inviting a conversation, both your questions and possibly afterwards, and hopefully afterwards, to sit down with us and, and, uh, and think through what needs to happen next in order for us to deliver on this.